There is over 1,000 grams of calcium in our bodies, and 99% of it is found in bones. While a tiny portion of the calcium in bones is easily exchangeable with blood, most is trapped in stable hydroxyapatite crystals, which must be dissolved by osteoclasts to release calcium into the bloodstream. Maintaining calcium homeostasis is a crucial physiological process because deviations from the narrow range of normal blood calcium concentrations can have disastrous effects. Hypercalcemia, or too much calcium in the blood, can cause nervous system depression, muscle weakness, and potential cardiac arrest. Hypocalcemia, a low blood calcium concentration, is even more dangerous. Hypocalcemia can cause excessive nervous system excitability, which results in tremors, spasms, and tetany, or the inability of a muscle to relax. Hypocalcemia can be fatal when it leads to tetany of the larynx, causing suffocation. Millennia of evolution must have developed mechanisms to prevent these imbalances from in occurring in healthy individuals. Fortunately, we have three hormones which regulate calcium homeostasis in our blood. Calcitriol, parathyroid hormone, and calcitonin. Let's take a look at each of these hormones. This diagram shows vitamin D or calcitriol synthesis. UV rays act on epidermal keratinocytes, transforming 7-dehydrocholesterol in the blood into vitamin D3. The liver adds a JOH group, and then the kidney adds another group. The kidney then converts vitamin DC into calcitriol, the most potent form of vitamin D. Calcitriol acts on the bones, kidneys, and small intestine to raise blood calcium and phosphate levels, and to promote bone deposition. PTH, or parathyroid hormone, also increases blood calcium concentrations. Like calcitriol, PTH binds to osteoblasts and simulates calcified bone re resorption by osteoclasts, which release the digested calcium into the bloodstream. PTH also shares calcitriol's function of promoting calcium reabsorption by the kidneys, so less is lost in urine. PTH even plays a role in synthesizing calcitriol, and thus it has an indirect effect on increasing blood calcium levels. Calcitonin is the only hormone which lowers blood calcium levels, although it is really only significantly prevalent in children. Calcitonin reduces osteoclast resorption of calcified bone, and it increases the number and productivity of bone-depositing osteoblasts. So, calcitonin both slows the release of calcium from bones and increases the storage of calcium in bones.